Professor Dave and Chegg here. Earlier we learned the basics regarding conformational analysis of linear molecules. But in organic chemistry, we will also be dealing with lots of cyclic molecules, and in particular, cyclohexane. Derivatives of cyclohexane are absolutely ubiquitous, so we need to understand the conformations that this molecule adopts as well. Let's start by acknowledging that the way we represent cyclic molecules in line notation is not quite as geometrically accurate as when we draw linear molecules. Cyclic molecules tend to be drawn in top-down fashion, so we don't get quite the same zigzag as we do for linear molecules that are drawn from the side. In addition, rotation around these sigma bonds is somewhat restricted because the ring must remain intact while rotation occurs. For this reason, cyclohexane adopts just a couple of very specific conformations. The less stable conformations are the half chair, boat, and twist boat conformations, while the most stable is the chair conformation. This is shown here, and it is important to note that this is an edge-on view of the molecule, as opposed to the top-down view we are used to. This is helpful because we can more clearly see all of the bond angles and the positions of the substituents on every carbon. Cyclohexane will spend most of its time in this conformation because it is the lowest energy conformation, and it is the lowest energy conformation for two very important reasons. First, notice that every carbon obeys perfectly tetrahedral geometry with 109.5 degree bond angles. It will be tremendously useful for us to be able to visualize the little pyramid at each carbon, superimposing a dash bond and wedge bond if necessary. This is quite important because the angles of these bonds towards the hydrogen atoms tend to seem arbitrary at first glance, but they are not. They project in a manner that obeys tetrahedral geometry. So we must be able to visualize this side of the chair as being closer to us and this side of the chair as being farther away from us as we are looking at the molecule edge on. The second reason that contributes to this being the lowest energy conformation is that if we were to draw a Newman projection for any of these bonds, we would find only staggered conformations everywhere on the molecule, as opposed to other conformations which offer the possibility of some eclipsed interactions. Putting all this together, we can see why we call this the chair conformation, because it quite literally resembles a lawn chair that one could lounge upon. Try to always see it this way, and don't allow your brain to flatten this out into a two-dimensional lightning bolt-looking figure. We must perceive the implied depth at all times. We must be able to draw chair conformations for cyclohexane and its derivatives, so make sure to practice this. Make sure your three sets of lines are parallel, and that none of them are vertical, as this makes the geometry ambiguous. Practice until you can get them looking exactly like this, and that will make it much easier to answer questions regarding relative energy and reactivity. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.